nothing left to live for. You're saying anybody who wants to end their life, and this, these, these two people no. that you're talking about, though, that they, they're, they're perfectly healthy? I'm not saying that. Well, what, what, what exactly that, are you? That, what, you can't take a teenager thing? who wants to end his life in the, because he is immature. But you got a guy who is retired. He's a C, he, former CEO, intelligent, healthy, good-looking, everything good about him. Nothing left to do in life. Nothing left. No mission. No that they purpose. know of. No purpose. That they know of. No, well, that who else would know but he, the person. For many people, life is a gift. It's a gift? And nothing left to do in life. Nothing left. No mission. No that they purpose. know of. No purpose. That they know of. No, well, that who else would know but he, the person. For many people, life is a gift. It's a gift? Who gave it to you? Is life a gift? Who gives it to you? Who gives who gives you life? Your parents. Right. You weren't asked to be, you know, Schopenhauer said it nicely. What crime has this child committed that it should be born? <laughs> it's a profound, that's a it's a it's a deeply pessimistic thing to hear. But it's very sensible. My mother went through the Armenian Holocaust genocide she'd often say when she'd sit at this table you know you, what kind of life is this you know life is wonderful if you've got a good life if you're healthy and pain, painless and all that ask somebody in Darfur or, or uh, in Iraq or somewhere ask, ask somebody if he wants to be if, it's, if life is beautiful so much of what happens in our lives, we, we don't know. We don't know what's around the next corner. We don't know That's what's right. going to happen tomorrow. That's right. So for these two guys, again, that you talk about, your friends who say they want to end it, yeah. do you tell them? But they've done everything in life. They, they don't know what's do. tomorrow. There's no mission for Maybe them Maybe they'll anymore. meet the love of their life tomorrow. Well, they have already met the love of their life. Their wife is dead. But that's Everybody's life is different, and that's why it's hard to judge. I am for absolute autonomy. Got that? There's nobody that got more autonomy in mind than I have. Hmm. That's what's wrong with this world and this life. If you had, so if you had some completely treatable disease yourself, uh, that if you treated it, you'd be fine. If you didn't treat it, you would die. What would you do? Uh, it depends on circumstances. When you're young, you know, you're going to live forever, and the world is wonderful and rosy. You know, it's been propagandized to death. Everywhere, you, every institution, public institution, has to do that to survive. It has to be what's called optimistic. See? Well, I can train myself to be sort of pessimistic. If you're pessimistic and you, you uh, are in the type of business that you were in, for a period of time. Do you worry that somehow you might be Im imposing your worldview on someone else who's desperate, who may be suffering, who may be in pain? No, I would never do that. Is there some virtue in simply being alive? No. I always said all my life, that if, I, if, if I wasn't born and they gave me the question, I'd say I don't want to be born. When we come back, what's next? movement for assisted suicide and here's more of our conversation what, what keeps you going mission what is the mission well I got three of them one will come out in a book in about a month and a half a little book is coming out we've kept it quiet it ain't going to make me popular well that's, what is it that's one mission one mission is is to uh, to uh, warn you about the disappearance of the species homo sapiens because we're committing suicide as a species let what? me just ask you why are we doomed huh why are we well, doomed? i can't tell you now wait look what comes out read it what's what's the second what mission number one we discuss number two we don't use number one's going to make you really unpopular and we're all going to be doomed the third one you the third number two one. is euthanasia what's number three number three uh our rights, our human rights, we're born with them. Natural rights, 
Have you heard of the Ninth Amendment and the sure. Constitution? I'm just trying to get this. I wrote this in prison. You wrote this in prison? Yeah. Ninth Amendment. Look at the back page. The enumeration of the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. What's that say? Ninth Amendment says any right listed in this Constitution doesn't mean that you can deny, get that word deny, or disparage, you know what that means, others retained by the people. Law doesn't create a right. You're born with it. All the law does is stop you from using one. Right? Uh, Do you think they were wrong to send you to prison? Based on the laws of the land? They were wrong, not according to their law. They were, they were okay according to their laws, but their laws were unconstitutional. <laughs> Ninth Amendment. Whether, whether euthanasia is... Uh, oh, but I never told you the medical term for that. It's Greek. Patholysis. For euthanasia? Yeah. You know what it means. Pathos. Disease. Or, or suffering. And lysis, get rid of? Get rid of it. Totally. The ultimate way to get rid of disease or suffering is to? Of, of, of getting rid of suffering, the, uh, real suffering, the ultimate way of getting rid of it is dying. That's the only way. You know, there is some pain you can't control with medicine. Do you know that? You know that. <laughs> when we come back, Dr. Kevorkian tells me the one th art. And before we finished our interview, I asked him, about his dark, dark vision. This is really, really morbid stuff. No, it's honest, it's fact. What? It's fact, it's just unpleasant fact. See, this is the point. People don't look at unpleasant aspects of life because they've been trained to look at the pleasant stuff. This is war. This one. This one's most popular among young people. I saw that, on the, that's on the cover as well. Nearer, my God, to thee. How yeah. do most hum humans feel about dying, at least about their own deaths? Most people think about dying. Huh? Is this what they envision? Is that what you're most trying to Most people think of dying that way, yeah. Sinking into oblivion. And all these other faces looking up at them. And sparing nothing. Wearing the fingers of a bone to try to avoid it. They want us to live. Huh? He wants to live. He's a weakling. You know, the, the last thing I really wanted to sort of ask you about, and how much of Jack of Orkian has become sort of the caricature of Jack of Orkian? How much of this is just because people expect you to behave a certain way? No. Act a certain way? No, I'm acting freely now. That's how I feel good acting this way. I, this I don't, is, I'm not this lying. is the genuine... I'm not lying to myself, like most people. See, I'm, I, I, I know I my defects, my deficiencies, I know what life is like, and... Any regrets about anything? No. None? No. No. Uh, the only regrets I have is I could have treated my parents better, and my sisters better. You know, it's personal I I relationships. But uh, anything else I've been in, anything I've done publicly, especially since graduation, uh, is all my doing. I take full blame. It's a pleasure to meet you. Well, it's an honor. Thank you. I've always wanted oh, to meet you. On, Seriously, I've, I've wanted to meet you for a long time. Well, I can tell you, this was a day that made me think.